A sudden hush fell over the tarmac at Heathrow as the distinctive silhouette of the Chinese J-20 stealth fighter jet pierced through the overcast London sky. The scene was surreal, an aircraft once considered a mystery, then a threat, and now a symbol of rapidly shifting global aeronautical power had just touched down in the heart of the UK. The landing wasn't part of a military exercise or covert operation, it was a statement, an invitation, and perhaps even a challenge. The jet, developed under intense secrecy by the People's Liberation Army Air Force, had just done what few thought possible only a few years ago, outperform one of the most respected fourth-generation fighter jets in the world, the French Rafale, and land on western soil for a formal demonstration. Only a decade ago, the idea of China developing a stealth fighter to rival western technology seemed far-fetched. Skepticism ran deep in defense circles across Europe and North America. The J-20, often dismissed in its early days as an overhyped prototype, evolved under the watchful eye of engineers at Chengdu Aerospace Corporation into a lethal piece of air dominance machinery. With each passing year, updates to its avionics, maneuverability, and radar-evading capabilities closed the gap between it and the established titans of the sky. It wasn't just a matter of catching up anymore, it was about surpassing. In recent joint international air combat drills conducted in neutral territories under simulation-based scoring, the results were difficult to ignore. The J-20 demonstrated superior beyond visual range BVR engagement, thanks to its advanced AESA radar and long-range Place 15 missiles. Rafale, the French-built fighter renowned for its agility, multirole versatility, and combat experience in Mali, Libya, and Afghanistan, struggled to respond effectively when forced into engagements outside its optimal operating envelope. Analysts were quick to debate the results, attributing them to everything from pilot training variants to weather conditions, but the message was clear, China's jet had reached a new echelon of capability. Western defense contractors, especially those in Europe, watched with an uneasy mix of admiration and concern. Dassault Aviation, makers of the Rafale, defended their aircraft's record, citing its real-world combat success and adaptability. But even within their own ranks, there was an acknowledgement that the competition had evolved. Gone were the days when Chinese aviation could be brushed off as reverse-engineered copies of Russian or American models. The J-20 wasn't a clone, it was the vanguard of a new doctrine, one that blended indigenous innovation with strategic purpose. The arrival in London was both symbolic and strategic. While the UK has no plans to procure the J-20, the jet's presence on British soil, as part of an international air show and technology symposium, was a diplomatic olive branch wrapped in carbon fiber and jet fuel. China was signaling a new chapter, not just of military pride, but of global aerospace collaboration. Or, perhaps, rivalry wrapped in the veil of transparency. Security was predictably tight. Military attaches, intelligence officers, and aviation experts crowded into hangars and briefing rooms to catch a glimpse of the jet up close. Engineers examined its airframe for clues about its stealth profile, pilots speculated on its thrust vectoring potential. The few Chinese officials accompanying the aircraft answered questions carefully, aware of the immense curiosity but also of the geopolitical weight that came with every word. Meanwhile, the jet itself stood under the grey London sky like a visitor from another reality, familiar in shape, but foreign in purpose. Its canopy glistened with morning dew, and its twin. Engines still held the faint warmth from their long transcontinental journey. In its silence, it spoke volumes. British media were abuzz. Headlines speculated whether the landing represented a broader shift in global military balance. Commentators debated the implications, was it an overt display of power or a subtle form of diplomacy? Could this opening lead to shared research ventures, or was it a prelude to a new arms race in the skies? For the French, the moment was bittersweet. The Rafale, long considered Europe's premium multirole fighter, had built a legacy across several continents. It had won deals in India, Egypt, and Qatar, and had proven its metal time and again in combat. But now, a newcomer had landed in the heart of Europe with a sleek, angular body and a track record that could no longer be ignored. Behind closed doors, defense ministries took note. NATO planners analyzed the data with cold precision. Air forces from Berlin to Washington quietly recalibrated their assumptions. 
The jet that once symbolized a regional leap in technology had now entered the global arena. And it did so not with a roar, but with the subtle confidence of a machine that had proven itself under scrutiny. Perhaps the most striking aspect of the visit was how quickly perceptions were changing. China's presence in advanced aviation had gone from being seen as an imitator to an innovator. Its jet had not only beaten expectations, it had beaten one of Europe's best, and now it was being welcomed, cautiously, but without denial. As evening fell over Heathrow, the J-20 remained the center of attention. Visitors took photos, military personnel exchanged guarded observations, and the global aerospace community felt the tremor of an undeniable shift. It wasn't just about who had the fastest jet or the best radar anymore. It was about influence, prestige, and the new rules of air power in the 21st century. And there it stood, the dragon in the west, no longer confined to rumor or theory, but grounded on a runway thousands of miles from home, making history with every second it stayed.